Justin, it's always a pleasure, mate. Love talking to you. Preparing for Twickers this weekend. Out of all the places that you've been to and played rugby, I know the high veld and that there's massive, a massive expectation. It's a, it's a fearsome place to go. But the most horrible place in world rugby, as an all-black fan, to go and lose is that goddamn place, mate, Twickenham. <laughs> yeah, it's never pleasant. Um, thankfully, I never actually suffered that. But when I did suffer a loss there, it was against France in oh, 1999. Yes. So, um, <laughs> that was uh, that was that that was that game. But um, you know, against England, I managed to get through the, uh, playing on that stadium pretty unscathed, which was good. But uh, we did have a draw there. Yes, um, and I was in the side in '97. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I think there's two sides of it. I think if you lose to England at Twickenham. Uh, they certainly do let you know uh, that they've beaten you um, and probably is not as humble as what they should be. Um, and then secondly, uh, you know, the other side of it is the, the history side. You know, like, uh, it, it's it's one of the great stadiums to play at, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, obviously they've got their, their sweet swing low, sweet chariot. They they like to use that. Uh, they know it sort of gets under the nerves of New Zealanders, particularly at Haka time. Um, but... I still feel that, you know, they're a very respectful crowd. Um, you know, when the kickers are kicking, it goes dead quiet for both sides. And, you know, it's one of the biggest stadiums in the world. I think it's just just over 80,000 people. It's a pretty cool place to play and to play against England and keep that crowd quiet if you can. Almost impossible to predict this weekend, mate. I mean, uh, you know, here we are, the Jekyll and Hyde All Blacks again. But hey, look, we're, we're, we're in this great position where we can close out with five wins for the season. And I want to go back to that a little bit later on in this chat. But an England side that lost to Argentina, I thought they they played pretty well against Japan. But again, you know, don't know how much to put on that game. And here's an All Black side that we were great against Wales when we had the time and the space against Scotland again, like Japan. I didn't think we we're going to lose that game, Marshy, but it wasn't our greatest performance. With the up and down nature of it, I mean, does that mean that we go to England and play really well this time? Well, wow, you know, what are the trends like? Um, you know, when we when we lost to Ireland, you thought there'd definitely be a response, um, and you know, we, we lost two on the bounce. So you've got to be very careful, I guess, that, uh, you know, this is still a, a very dangerous side, this England side. I think they're in a similar position to the All Blacks at the moment. They're really struggling to find their rhythm and their, their actual pathway to a, to a game plan that really suits their team. So because of that, Eddie Jones has been continually tweaking and changing the team. Um, there's no regularity about it and, and in key positions as well. So I don't think that's helping them. You know, again, I've, I've been very vocal in the fact that I felt that changing, you know, uh, 10 players for that test match um, against Scotland was just the wrong thing to do. I think those players needed to come over here, that starting 15, that nucleus of the team that played in Wales, and they needed to do a quarter-final, semi-final, final of the Rugby World Cup. You know, they need to do Wales, Scotland and England, win them convincingly, gain some confidence. So... We're going to see, um, obviously, a heap of changes again, um, which, again, upset, it upsets the rhythm a little bit. Uh, so I think both both teams are basically in a similar position, trying to find their mojo, trying to find their starting starting players that, that are going to be there next year and going to be um, the ones that they're going to go to and, and formulate uh, and sort of get a game plan to go forward to win that World Cup. How okay? I mean, this is a good, you know the key. The key question is how good are we? And and and, and I ask that: Is this the the real litmus test? Is this particular test the last game of the season? Does this say everything about where we are currently at? Oh look, I think if we were playing Ireland or France, yes. Um, but at the moment, you know, England is still a daunting challenge. Uh, but they are still a side that will be very determined to beat the All Blacks. Uh, few of the All Blacks will have scores to settle from 2019, considering they haven't had a chance or an opportunity against England since they got knocked out by them at the Rugby World Cup. Equally, England will be wanting to try and, I guess, create another psychological blow for the All Blacks, that they, that they can beat them, and um, and they can do it not only at World Cups, they can do it on their home patch, and they can play. They can do it when they're not playing well. So, yeah, look, uh, in terms of litmus test, um, Look, certainly, there's no there's no evidence that clearly shows that England are at the calibre of France and Ireland at the moment, um, but neither are the All Blacks. So, I guess it's always a daunting challenge at Twickenham. So, quite possibly, it's the hardest Test match of the three. So, yeah, we, we can judge the All Blacks uh, on that Test match to a degree, but I still think, regardless of the result at the weekend, there is still 
a bit of a, a bit of a mountain to climb to try and get to where we need to be by this time next year. Justin Marshall with us in the UK then, 6am NZT. It is Sunday morning, 81 test veteran for the All Blacks. I'm, I'm, I'm really fascinated to hear you say that, that Ireland and France, you believe, are that far ahead of us still at the moment, given what we've seen over the last few weeks with these Autumn Internationals? Yep, and, and, and that's because they're continuing to win. You know, they, they have been pushed, no doubt about it, and that's what best teams in the world, they get, they get pushed, uh, and the opposition want to knock them off their pedestal. The All Blacks have have held that mantra, um, you know, previously to previous to the, the probably 2018, I guess, um, where they were just that team to knock off its pedestal and teams would come at you hard. So that's what you've got to live with when you're sitting on top of the world. You know, you've got to live that, that teams want to knock you off your perch. But at the moment, they're continually batting them away and winning, and they might not be winning pretty, but good teams still win. Uh, let's face it, Marty, what's the main difference between... Ireland and France and the rest of the world at the moment. It's very simplistic. But you, you could guarantee pretty much what side they're going to pick each week um, because they they have consistency in selection. They have their core players that they, they know that you're going to have the same back row. So barring injury um, and maybe one or two minor tweaks due to form or being a little bit off pace, they are so consistent with their selections that they are formulating a very rhythmic, um, I, I guess, surge in, in terms of the teams that they are presenting and the results they are getting. Uh, France are 13 on the bounce, I believe. It's either 12 or 13 games are undefeated. Oh, yeah. So mm. so that, that, they're formulating a very formidable record. So in answer to your question, <laughs> yes. Um, England and New Zealand at the moment, I believe, are behind France and, and Ireland in terms of form. Well, where do you stack South Africa then, mate? Because, OK, they lost 1916 to Ireland, and, and that was a real arm wrestle. Then losing to Toy, I mean, going down to 14 always makes it almost impossible to win a test match, you know that. So, mm. But they, they took France close. So they took both of those teams close, and they seem not to... I don't know, it's not that they don't care that they lose, but they seem to actually be able to put those results on the back burner because they are so focused, aren't they, on World Cups now, South Africa, and basically that's what really counts to them. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, there's no doubt that they will be there or thereabouts, and they've got the, 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 the type of game plan around the type of players that they've got that will, will always challenge any team in the world. Concerning for them will be they've lost three of their last four tests. They lost to the All Blacks. Um, they beat Argentina and they've lost the next two over here. So they're slightly out of sorts at the moment as well. And what South Africa were doing um, when they were trucking um, you know, along quite nicely was they were winning ugly at times, but they're still winning. Well, they're not doing that now. Um, yeah, they've had some adversity and, and, and a lot of that's inaccuracy or, or you know, just poor, like the, the weekend poor uh, management um, in the discipline zone. But yeah, they're slightly off the pace as well. So that, that's the rationale that I didn't throw them in the mix with Ireland and France because they are a little as inconsistent as some of the other teams at the moment that are behind those two sides. This uh, All Black team, what do you expect? Do you expect to see the same team that played against Wales? Uh, because, you know, we obviously... And, and also the sub-part to that question is, we had um, Steve Hans, we had Shag on the programme uh, yesterday, and he was saying, look, you know, Ian Foster has to do this chopping and changing at the moment, that we need to give guys game time, that, you know, we don't know who's going to be available for the World Cup. So, you know, do you believe that aspect as well, that we have to, which means there's no absolute continuity, even though both of us have maintained that, hey, we thought we should have played the same team, Wales, Scotland and England. Yeah, look, I, that, that's, that's Steve Hansen's opinion. Um, I know him well, and I'd be happy to have a beer at the pub with him and tell him that I think that's a load of bollocks, to be perfectly honest. Um, I'm not sure whether he's saying that simply because he's trying to defend some of Fozzie's decisions because he knows them well. Um, but I, I certainly don't feel that the All Blacks are doing themselves any favours by continually changing and changing 10 players or 8 players or whatever it might be. Um, you know, good sides don't do that. Super sides don't do that from week to week. Um, just in case they're not going to have players available, they simply put the players out there and they formulate a winning culture and uh, they get stuck in. And, you know, these players have got to be able to play three, four World Cup games, big ones on the bounce. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not all about preservation. I'm not about finding out. Um, if you don't know by now, then the, the horse is bolted, unfortunately. Might as well use that pun, given what um, oh. <laughs> it predominantly does now. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, look, I think, I think Marty, uh, short answer now for, for, your, for your original question. Uh, yes, it will probably revert very similar 
to what we saw against Wales. I think Geordie will go back to the midfield. Rico will come back in. Um, Bowden will go back to fullback. Aaron Smith will obviously come back in. Moonga will come back in. Um, Papaliti was outstanding again. Uh, you probably see some reps. Uh, Rizal start again. So the uh, front row should change. Um, I thought the impact of the bench at the at the weekend was the saviour of the All Blacks. To be fair, I thought Cody Taylor, Fletcher Newell, and George Boward completely changed the dynamic of the way the scrum was going and the breakdowns were hitting. Um, I thought Cody Taylor probably played some of his best rugby as in a couple of years in the short of the 40 minutes or 35 minutes here on the field. Um, I thought Rico made a difference. Uh, and, yeah, I, I really think that the bench uh, showed that, um, you know, those players possibly should have been playing anyway. What are we stuffing around the, with the team for? What does it say about where Ian Foster is at, Justin, after um, this particular season that he's had? And I don't know whether or not you've actually taken the time while you're over there to keep following what's going on in the New Zealand press here. But I can tell you, mate, that all... All of the, the the mass media guys who are absolutely sticking it to him uh, and now just bum calling to him. I mean, it's an, it's almost embarrassing. You know, the articles that are being written about how he's turned the team around, all this kind of stuff. And I know that he's actually got a bit, mm. bit snippy with some of the media and decided that he's not going to do one-on-one interviews and whether or not that's actually part of all of this. But it's almost been a complete reversal here. And I'm not I'm not so sure that, that either position actually has any credibility. Hacking into him the way that, that people did during the year was particularly cruel. And at the moment, we're not we're not that impressive as a side where you can turn around and actually say, hey, everything is okay again. I still think we're stuck somewhere in the middle, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. You know, I certainly feel that, you know, the, the tinkering just um, it continually confuses me. Um, I, f- I feel that there's a semblance of a game plan one week and then, uh, then it changes for some reason. You know, the All Blacks went to a lot different type of kicking strategy to try and, you know, um, beat beat Scotland's defence. Now, they're a very good defensive side, Scotland. In fact, they're, they're in the top three in the world at the moment on their tackle percentage ratio. So they're a good side uh, at defending. So the All Blacks maybe thought that they wouldn't be able to go through them as much as what they went through Wales. But I sort of thought, you know, this is reverting again to a, a different type of game plan. You know, instinctively, well, I've always banged this drum. We want to use the ball where we can. Um, so... That, that comes into it, and then obviously the tinkering with the team, which I won't delve into anymore. Mm-hmm. There's still a few things that are not quite right to me. Um, certainly there's been progress. Um, I certainly feel that uh, individuals seem better in the current culture, so the tweaks and changes he's made within the, the coaching group have obviously made a difference because individuals, um, certain individuals are playing a lot better, um, which helps. But... Uh, Look, it's far from the finished product yet. Um, I feel there's been improvement, but I still feel that there's still something not quite right in there that that, uh, that the All Blacks are certainly not a team that people are, are seeing at the moment as being the team to beat come Rugby World Cup, you know, and, um, and, 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 and every weekend. Do you know what I mean? Like, if they were, if they were on form, Marty, and they, they had rediscovered their mojo and they were playing bloody good All Black Rugby, We'd all be feeling a lot better about how we feel the result was going to go on Saturday. But you, your opening question to me was, you know, is this the litmus test? You know, have we got the ability to win it? You know, yeah, what? True. we are only saying those things for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true, mate. It's true because I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not absolutely convinced right now. No, and look, and, and I think if the World no. Cup was played today, I don't think that we're actually winning it with this team at the moment. No, no, you know, so you, you've got to say, right, oh well. Whatever's going on, um, and and whatever you feel that you're doing by, you know, like it's ridiculous what they did to Stephen Pierrefeta. Come on, like yeah, honestly, right, yeah. <clears throat> I I sat there in that stadium and I saw him come on with just over a minute to play or whatever it was, and I thought, why are you doing this to that poor kid? You know, like it's almost wrecking his moment, Justin, I think he isn't the it? Ball yeah, I mean that's what I feel. It's kind of like you. One. I mean, what kind of so that's the memory you take from your first game is that that you're on for thirty seconds, you don't touch the. Yeah, it's a bit. Kind of a bit sour, fellow. The other question I got for you, mate, is that, you know, and 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 you know, I, I just wonder who the hell makes these decisions. But you know, for the All Blacks to be playing in the UK, and then at the same time, this team called the All Blacks Fifteen is playing in the UK. That's just wrong, mate. I don't care what anyone says. Well, it's, a, it's wrong for marketing, but as an All Black fan, there's one All Black side, mate. There's only one. It's not sevens. It's not fifteens. Blow to cobblers, mate. It's the All Blacks. That's right. And if, if Steve Hansen's, um, what he's saying, he feels that Dean Foster is trying to do and what he's trying to find out about players, that's the environment to do it in. So the All Blacks selected that site. 
and Leon McDonald's just the coach. He didn't really have any influence at, at all. No. So if, Steve Fo- if Ian Foster wants to find out about a few players, don't tamper with the All Blacks. Put those players in that environment against Ireland and against the Barbarians and see them perform in the UK. Why are you doing it internally in your team, which is messing with the with the flow? So there's... I don't know. I hope there's a method to some of the madness, but um, you, you've got to wonder a little bit. Let's finish on the Black Ferns. I know you're a million miles away, 12,000 miles away, but I can tell mm. you, just Justin, that being at the stadium on Saturday night, it, it was a different crowd than an all-black test and a different feeling. And you know, and the worst thing about it is it's kind of provoked a lot of kind of anti-all-black response. Oh, the men don't get that. The men don't. Richie McCall wouldn't have led that song. All of this kind of crap which is just irrelevant. I don't know why people can't celebrate both. But there was just a real joyous thing going on. And one other thing that Steve Hansen said to me, he says, we've got to reignite the fun aspect in men's professional rugby in this country because we seem to have lost that. We don't actually have that much. When we got to see the All Blacks, this is our number one national team. This is in our blood. We should be hooting, howling and celebrating every single game that we play. And it's a real shame that as fans, we don't do that. Yeah, absolutely, we should be. Um, You know, we should be... You know, we should be absolutely elated whenever the All Blacks win. Yes, um, yes. The problem is at the moment that's just that's just not happening as regularly as what we're used to in our history, and we're getting cost, constantly disappointed. You know, the fact that there are things happening within, as we've spoken about, uh, within our legacy of the All Black jersey currently and in the last couple of years that is massively affecting people's well, not love for the All Blacks. It's, it's just affecting their mindset of being able to sort of celebrate and. And, and see the team go out and play the type of rugby we expect the All Blacks to play and feel good about it. Um, at the moment, it's a bit of a hard watch at times. So you, I, I just think it's, an, I think it's an allowing us to do that. But yeah, I absolutely agree. I think it's time that this side went out and started playing the style and with the ball that we know that they can play. And, and then, you know, the crowd getting behind that, that style of rugby because it's what we all want to see. So yeah, it was a fantastic result um, uh, for... Uh, the, the Black Ferns, um, absolutely amazing final, I believe. Again, I didn't see, I didn't see any of that game, um, but uh, over here. But um, I believe that it was a monumental occasion, and uh, you know how how wonderful to um, to knock over the best team in the world uh, and and win that title on your home patch and, and at the Garden of Eden as well. P- pretty cool story, and uh, yeah, look, I love the way that Ruby Tui a- approaches um, her rugby. So. Uh, and, and and her life in general, really. So good on her for just expressing herself and, and, and all the rest of those girls as well. They deserve it.